If you'd help me, I'm the man who can give you the one thing you want. Welcome back to the WD Magic Cast for the week of February 19th, 2023. This is episode 216, WD Magic Cast, the show about the mouse, the marvels, the galaxy, and beyond. I'm your host, Matthew Graken. In this week's show, we sit down and review Marvel Studios' latest film, Ant Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. So join us for your discussions. I preface it now, there may be some spoilers. We try our best to, to not get into too heavy spoiler stuff at the beginning, but things being as they are, uh, we, we do get into some details about things that happen, about characters. So uh, we'll give you a grade ahead of time and then we're going to break into things. And also this week's survey. This week's survey... I wanted to follow up on last week's episode of Have You Played Disney's Dreamlight Valley? And I wanted to see, Gage, what did you be, whatever, what, what do the people think of Disney's Dreamlight Valley? <clears throat> and your four options being, yes, loved it. I did, but not anymore. Not yet, but I want to. And not interested. Those are, those were the, the four four options um or have you played disney's dreamlight valley and then um yeah, have you played disney's dreamlight valley yes you love it i did but i'm not anymore not yet but i want to and not interested those are the options and you can find this poll on twitter and on our facebook group so yes there's the facebook the facebook group is back because uh, you know this is a learning process and i have found out that that's where I could do polls and I can't do it on the Facebook page. <sighs> Sorry, learning on Facebook still all these years later, still learning things. Um, so head over to the Facebook group, um, which just, just search WD magic cast and it, it should pop up and the polls are going to be in there. I repost them to the Facebook page and then also it's on Twitter. So at WD magic cast on the Twitter and you could, participate in our surveys on there so on to the results after all that on to the results nobody said that they uh were play they used to play it and but they're not playing it anymore so i did but not anymore no one said that no one also said not yet but i wanted to 17 percent said they're not interested okay that's fine you know, it's not for everybody. Not everything is for everybody. But an outstanding 83% of you, 83%, and that's that's a pretty solid number, said yes and love it. Um, and as you heard Kim's response, she is in there. Yes, she loved it. Um, the little bit I've played, I think it's really cool. And most of you, just about, you know, over eight out of ten people said that you all love it so that that is fantastic that is fantastic to hear that means it is a, a it's a really good game um and just about everybody likes it and in keeping up with it and, and playing it so if you didn't get a chance to vote in this week's poll don't worry there'll be another one shortly and on that bombshell we'll be back after these words from our friends and sponsors
And now, on with the show. It is official. Marvel's Phase 5 is here upon us. And to kick it off, they bring in their littlest heroes, Ant-Man and the Wasp, and Quantum Mania, or as I've been calling it, Quantum Mania Boogaloo, because it's, I still say it's one of the strangest titles to bestow many of their movies. And to help with strange things, you know, I, I have to bring in Dr. Dr. Strange himself. Dave, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. You're quite welcome. We uh, just off the marathon run of watching the movie mm -hmm. and letting it digest overnight, which is why this episode comes out a day later. And um, we're here to discuss uh, discuss the Ant-Man and the Wasp, or the third installment in the Ant-Man uh, Ant line. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I th we're just going to... We're gonna, Give our general idea of the movie, give our our rating, and then we'll we'll go into the spoilers area. So you if you haven't seen it yet, go up, you could hear what we thought of it without hearing any spoilers, and then pause it, go watch the movie, come back and see if we uh if we agree on our general thoughts. If you have seen it, feel free to just keep listening all the way through. So what was your take in general? Without uh, getting to spoilers, what's your take on this latest Ant Man movie, Ant Man and the Wasp? Right. Um, for me, like now, I was a fan of the first two, so I had hopes for this one uh, because I'm on record saying that the it just seems like the MCU were spinning their wheels with the direction and one-off movies and stuff like that. Um, it just to me, it just didn't seem like we were going anywhere. Uh, thankfully, uh, watching this one, it, it, it made me feel back in home with them. Like, it felt like we had a direction. It felt like we had, there was a decent storyline there. So I felt back in the MCU, like I did when all those other movies were coming up before Endgame. Uh, so I had zero issues with it. I enjoyed it. Was it the best movie in, out of the list of them? No, but it was good enough. To, to give you, to scratch that itch of being back in the MCU. I don't know if you agree, I, but that's how I felt. <laughs> yeah, no, no I, um, I'm i going to agree with you on that. I I really enjoyed it. There was a few in the past couple years that have just kind of been up and down, kind of floundering a little bit. There's been some good ones and some not so good ones. And uh, this, this is definitely one of the better ones. I think this definitely is a good kickoff for... For phase five. Yes. Um, I also agree that I felt we are starting to get more progression in what is happening. Mm -hmm. And it's starting to pull in some of the stuff from uh, a couple of the other series and things that we have seen. Right. Um, nothing, nothing. Well, no, I wouldn't even say because if you've seen, and this I don't think should be too spoilerish. If you've seen Loki, this kind of makes sense and brings things in. And I'll get into my thoughts more on that um, a little later on. But it's um, it was fun. It was um, it was one of the more serious Ant Man movies. Yeah, there yes. was, I mean, they they kept some of the lighthearted the the humor, but there was more a uh, sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. To, to what was happening and why things were happening. Um, but it still so gave I, you that, yeah, it was serious, but it still gave you that Ant-Man feel. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, so the, there's the, still the quirkiness and the, right. the, the some of the kidding around. But um, definitely more gravitas to to what was, you know, Michelle Pfeiffer's uh, whole, whole deal of um, what she went through mm -hmm. while she was in the, the quantum realm. Um bringing in character bringing in everybody and um you know the the daughter and 
the whole thing, uh, the relationship between Paul Rudd and his daughter in this. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it was, uh, yeah, it, it, more serious, but still the goofy Ant-Man that we know and love. Yes. So, um, yeah, I, 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 um, I was pleased with it. The special effects were mostly good. Um, the uh, Kang I thought was fantastic. I mean, he was just a a real uh, powerful villain. Yes. You know, and I think that's something again we haven't really seen in a while. Even going back to Thor: Love and Thunder, you, you, you Gore the God Butcher, and mm-hmm. I didn't think he was as compelling as one would think he should be. No. Well, with this performance, was Jonathan Majors, right? That, who played... Uh, yes. Ken. His performance right there, he, that's a remember... For me, that's a rememberable, if that's a word, performance. Yeah. I liked him as Kang. You know what I'm saying? And I hope that... I'm sure they're not going to switch him out, right? So he's... No, no. He, right? he, he's... Yeah. He's going forward. So that, to me, is awesome because I'm behind him as being Kang because he portrayed him superbly, in my opinion. Oh, he, he was absolutely fantastic. He, he, mm-hmm. I mean, you could you got the sense that he was scheming. He was a little off kilter, like just not everything. Right. You know, all the elevators went all the way up, and um, he was just <laughs> manipulative mm-hmm. and just just a a proper bad guy. Yes. Yes, and that's, and I think that's what like, that that's what's been missing. You know what I'm saying? There has there hasn't been anybody like that. Oh my god, I want to see that person again and another. I, we just haven't had that. So no. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad we finally got a villain that we can get behind. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he he was just he was absolutely brilliant, mm-hmm. and and that was a lot of the stuff I heard ahead of time, is that it, whether the people liked the movie or didn't. Um, Jonathan Majors, they said, was just the best part of the movie, and I, I, I agree. He, 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 his acting chops mm-hmm. and the way that he portrayed that. And if you'd watched Loki, it's the same actor, but there's a difference in the even though it's technically the same person mm-hmm. from alternate universes. It, it's you get a different sense, you know. It, it's he's portrayed differently. Mm-hmm. He, he just does such a, a brilliant, brilliant job at it. Um. So yeah, I I, uh, I I I I'm pleased with I was pleased with the movie. Um. And uh, I did not leave disappointed like I I have yeah. with some of the the more recent ones. Um, yeah, so no, all in all, good effort, good, good job by Marvel, and uh, I'm definitely looking forward to the next one in May, Guardians 3, which I think that might be a little bit of a tearjerker. Yeah, well, it's funny, we'll get to that, but it's funny when there was three of us at the movies, and it's it, it's funny when the third party asks how I felt about the movie because I was quiet throughout that. And I was like, well, that's because this was actually a good movie and I didn't have anything to kill on it. You know, it I it had my attention throughout basically the whole thing. <laughs> so, you know, that was a sign of a good Marvel movie as I wasn't chattering. <laughs> yes, Ant-Man, they showed you Ant-Man right from the beginning. You didn't have yeah. to wait two hours. Two hours to see it. And I have to either sit there listening to you the whole time. <laughs> where's, where's Ant-Man? Where's Ant-Man? Where's, where's Black Panther? Where's Black Panther? Where's Ant-Man? Where's... <laughs> I thought the title of this was Ant-Man. Where did he go now? <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, that indeed. Um, all right. So, um, what would you, out of ten, what would you give this movie? Uh, I don't want to over because it was good. I'll give it an eight. Out of the ten, you know, I don't think it was nine or ten worthy in my point. No, my definitely point. not for me. I don't think it was a nine or ten either. Yeah. Um, I I initially was thinking maybe I'd go with the seven, but the more I thought of it, I'm just like, no, it, it was better than that. Yeah. Definitely not a nine. Definitely not a ten. So I I'm I won eight as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the things like it. it you needed a day to soak that in and just think about what 
happened in that movie. You know, like I said, it was really good. I think eight's an appropriate score. It was good, yeah. but it, you know, it's not going to blow you away, but it's it's good enough. It's a good kickoff to Phase Five, I, I, in my opinion. I, I completely agree with that. I think um, now that we're officially in Phase Five, this was a good way to start it off, and it, kind of, it sets a tone of things to come. Um, and, and we will get more into that uh, in a moment. Um, but yeah, it it sets a tone. Um, it gives you an idea of what's to come. It, it's kind of a complete package. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because um, you, you start off with Ant-Man. Okay, here's the normal life. Here's my life going on. And then the oops happens. Um and obviously they with the it's in the commercial so it's not a spoiler they end up in the uh in the quantum realm and they go on the adventure and it's you start finding out pieces of things of what's going on and how these things happen and what led to this um and I think they, they did a good job on how everything came about. And they set everything up nicely mm-hmm. uh, throughout the movie. I mean, even at the point, okay, all right, something happened towards the beginning. I'm like, okay, that's going to come back later at the end of the movie. And they did. They they brought it back. And it, in the way that they did it, made to me, it made sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so everything kind of wraps up nicely, comes around nicely. And just in case for anyone who's listening who doesn't know, there are two extra credit scenes, um, after credit scenes. So State both end. both relatively important. So you know, make sure to stay in your seat, watch them through. And um, yeah, in, in, in well done scenes that lead into things that and kind of make sense. Yeah. Not kind of a, a random scene where you're going, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Like Bucky's arm caught in a vice. Okay. I, I, I don't understand <laughs> what we're, we're, why we're looking at this, but okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, it, I mean, you know, if you're bringing little kids to this too, there, there are a couple of, um, you know, the language is not bad. I mean, it's PG-13, uh, the movie. So, I mean, but there is some adult language in there uh, that could you, you might not want your kids listening to, depending on how old they are. But, you know. All right. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's minor. Yeah, that, that's up to you guys, you know, up to the, the person. I mean, um, up to your parenting styles. It, it's... Some of the more recent shows with the the language and the verbiage that they use, mm-hmm. um, if you're okay with that, you should be okay with this. Uh, feel free to go to one of the parenting rating sites and check it out, um, and they they will tell you kind of what to expect in a spoiler free way. Here's here's the uh, what could be um, deemed as questionable, and you determine. Are you okay with that with your kids? Or are you not so okay with that, your kids? Yeah. So that is, uh, uh, we'll leave that up to you. Exactly. <laughs> but for me, I was like, you know, when, when, especially that one that, you know, we're not going to get into, when that was said, I was like, wow, that's new for Marvel, but okay. <laughs> yeah, not so much. I, mean, does he, I think She Hulk, he had some, uh, some colorful, colorful wording there, yeah. in there too. <laughs> but whatever. All me. right, so at this point, I think uh, we'll conclude the spoiler-free section. Mm-hmm. And uh, fair warning to anyone listening, if you have not seen it, we will be getting into some more details about Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania. So if you don't want to be spoiled, pause us here, go watch the movie, come back, and enjoy the rest of the show. If you have, If you're not worried about spoilers or if you have seen the movie, then uh, let's kick along here. Um, I I I enjoyed how they they started off with Scott walking down the street yeah. and you know feeling self pride and fulfilled yeah. and people still kind of which one are you again? <laughs> yeah, called him Spider Man. 
<laughs> at the coffee place. At the co- <laughs> and then whenever they realize, wait, you're not Spider Man, you're the the other bug guy. You're the, yeah. the, the Ant Man. That'll be twelve bucks. Twelve bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and it's and Paul Rudd. He does doesn't miss a beat. He's like, okay, okay, yeah. Well, he got over so long, but he was like twelve bucks for a coffee. Man, <laughs> I think he got upcharged for all the free coffees. <laughs> the book, the book that Scott Lang wrote. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my, yeah. Will be available for purchase later this year. Get out of here! Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh my are you gonna buy it <laughs> i don't know i don't know about that but <laughs> it, it, yeah it, it will be available for purchase um so kind of that uh bringing the movie to reality reality for the movie uh type situation um was it look out for the little guy here we go something like that yeah Pre-order will be released in September. Wow. So they got a two-hour marketing gig for his book. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> it is the book from the movie. It's currently the number one bestseller for in fictional satire. Uh, wow. by, it's by Scott Lang. Does it say how many pages? Uh, let's see here. They may not know that yet because it's not fully published. Okay. Uh, oh, wait. No, no. Here it is. Hardcover, 224 pages. Okay. That's not that bad. That might be readable. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have time for like a 400, 500 page book right now. <laughs> no, but yeah, it, it's. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm going to get to pick this up just because. I would be interested to see what's in there. Release September 5th of this year. Okay. We got time. So, yeah. That, that, that should be, uh, yeah, currently available Amazon, Barnes & Noble, any of your, your bookseller find locations. So, yeah, that that's, I, I, I thought that was funny when I found out that that wow. book, <laughs> it, it will be, will be coming out. Uh, in typical, you know, his fashion, you know, he's just hamming it up, you know, when he's at the bookstore reading it, you know, to the kids and to the audience or whatever. You know, you can just see <laughs> that he's, you know, acting bigger than he probably should be. You know, he's all oh, yeah. And, and the, and the kid, like the, particularly the kids in the audience, not so much the parents, but the kids in the audience were eating it all up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, no, but yeah, there was, there that was, was only. Fun. Yeah, there was only one, like, there was one person who wasn't in it. I brought this up to you uh, last night that, uh, you know, he didn't fit in there, but he fits in the Ant-Man universe, and that was uh, uh, Michael Pena, Pena, Pena? Michael Pena, yeah. Well, the, yeah, did have, well, th- that whole little crew wasn't in it. So Michael Pena um, and the, the other guys. Yeah. Um, the, uh, uh. Ex-con security, was it? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah, Kurt Lewis and David. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the the, uh, the none of them were were physically in it. Uh, yeah. they, they were kind of like his supporting crew from the other two movies. You know, they they were just like, right. They, you know, but that's a minor. It's a minor thing. Like I know they don't fit. They wouldn't fit. There was no way they could put him in this movie. But that was just my my moment little. Because I just like the way he tells stories in in the Ant Man fashion. It was just, it was good. Yeah, the I, I I honestly think if they either they wouldn't have had a big enough part to justify bringing them in. Yeah. And everyone was like, well, they were there, but the, you we really didn't get that much of them. It, you kind of did them, a, did them a disservice. Or if you tried to write them in, then it was just too cluttered. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the film, and I I don't think it will play it out well because you already have uh, Hank, uh, Janet, and then um, so you, you you have that that whole uh, the four the five of them actually because you even you have the the daughter in there as well so you have the five characters as already 
on top of the um, quantum realm yeah. beings. Yeah. Uh, that you, you you kind of come in there through that. So it would definitely muddy the waters. There have just been way too many characters to, to make sense. Right. To justify having them there, and then all, you know, also the screen time and whatnot. So no, I, I, I miss Lewis. I miss the the comical aspect, but I yeah. don't think it would have been appropriate or right. I mean, again, just you know, showing up at the end or at the beginning, maybe, but you, we wouldn't do the character justice with yeah, that. Yeah, no, no. Like I said, it was just you know. If you're going there thinking that they're in the movie, they're not. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, because again, they they're in that they're in the in the trilogy well the, the other two so you would think they would be a part of the trilogy but they're not which you know again it's it is what it is <laughs> i yeah. missed them but they didn't fit in that story i agree with you on that so there was no way to use them um yeah so it's uh you got that you have um but everybody else is back like i said uh michelle pfeiffer um uh yeah, why can't I remember? Yeah, Michael Douglas. <laughs> Thank uh, you, Bill. Michael Douglas, Michelle Pfeiffer, Evangeline Lilly, and Paul Rudd. They're all back. Uh, Cassie is now yet again played by a, another actress. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is the third actress to play to play her, I think. So you have. Abby Catherine Ford. Newton in this one. Yeah, Abby, I mean, um, oh, I just had it. Abby Ryder Fortson later in the in the original, I believe. Mm-hmm. And then in Endgame, it was a different actress. Mm-hmm. Well, that was probably because I guess they wanted to age the the character. Yeah, to age her up. Yeah. Um, yeah, the addition of Bill Murray in this, which I enjoyed his character. Yeah, little cameo. You know. I, I was a little worried at first. I'm like, okay, where are we going to go with this? How are they going to fit him in? Um, but yeah, no, I, I think it worked. Yeah. I, I think it completely worked. He didn't go too, too crazy with it. He, and he just, he, he played it just right. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't have an issue. It's just, you, you start to wonder though, if, if it's that Star Wars thing where, you know, these people want to be a part of. These main actors want to be a part just to have that on their resume. You know what I mean? So now Bill can go, oh, yeah, I was an Ant Man, you know. Oh, it absolutely is. You know. And who was that? <laughs> Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe was in Thor Love and Thunder, right? That was Russell who played Zeus. <laughs> so now he could say he was in there, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh... <laughs> Sorry to bring that back up, but go ahead. <laughs> Well, I mean, what do you think about it? He, he's got the lineage. You got the the, the Greek gladiator, you know, the Roman gladiator playing a Greek, god, uh, a, a Norse, well, Zeus, no, there's a uh, Greek god. So, why not? Right. <laughs> But no, Bill Murray did not kill it. He was he was fine. I had no issues with. Bill no, Murray. yeah, he 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 worked. He, he played the part just right. Yeah, and I actually liked some of the tension that he add in, into it mm-hmm. between uh, himself and Janet, inferring a um, a past. Mm-hmm. Yeah, throwing off Michael Douglas's character. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, I did date once. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, you know, then it was, you know, it was good to see Michael Douglas again uh, in there. He, he still, he's still going because he's got yeah. to be up there in age now too, then, isn't he? Uh, yes, he is currently. Let's see, he was born in '44. So '79. No, seven, no, that's my math is off. Sorry. <laughs> seventy nine. You will. Right. You will be seventy nine in all, uh, September. Oh. So. Uh, you know, he so he, yeah, you know, getting on there with age, but 
He's um, he's still. It's not like he's out there doing stunts and stuff. He, you know, <laughs> I mean, he's. Well, I mean, they, they did crash him. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, true. Uh, the Michelle Pfeiffer, who's sixty-five. Um. You know, she she again pulled it off well, I think. Uh, with, I mean, is it a little strange that, yeah, you, know, you, you never mentioned any of this, you never mentioned this, any, any of this in the past, and um, it's a little weird that it came up, but I, I it didn't take me out of it, I didn't like really disbelieve it either. Uh, I did like the the fact, however, Scott mentioned that he helped defeat Thanos, and they're like, "Well, we we're, we were there too. It was just you." It's like, yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I always I just keep getting that shot of the um, the all female uh, moment of the end game battle where mm. just by chance all the female characters were in the exact same spot at the exact same time. To march on Thanos. <laughs> um, so, ah, uh, but what did you did you get a, a like? I know they weren't Avengers, but the 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 people in the quantum realm. Yes. When everything was going, you know, when when the battle was raging, did you get a, like I got an Avengers feel? To it, just the way the action was going, and you know them fighting Dan, um, Daniels, hello, uh, okay. Kang's army and stuff like that. To, I don't know. I I got like Avengers vibes. That's why I think I might have liked it so much because I knew they weren't, but it just felt like it, and it was a it, you know great action, good battle scenes and stuff. So it was like it was a cross between like a Avengers or like a Star Wars. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Yeah. Um. Like. Um. Uh, Rise of the Skywalker, that the the battle at the end there where they're all like charging on the, mm -hmm. the yeah. Empire and stuff. Uh, or not as goofy, but even I would say Phantom Menace, wherever you have the the Gungans fighting the the uh, right. droid army. <clears throat> but um, yeah, no, um, or actually no, uh, Attack of the Clones. When the clones come out and they they are battling the separatist movement, right? Yes. So that kind of big, yes, I I, ha I had you know uh, moments of, you know a connection to that, and I I thought they did it well. Yeah, and it's uh, the pacing they were all of it was right, the scale of it was right. Yeah, and it was all yeah. different kinds of characters. It wasn't just one like I don't know uh, what do you call it. It wasn't just one group. Kang's army were all the same, but uh, the Quantumanium people were all different. You know, you had the you guy had, you had the, the variety of even the the living house. And I I liked all the comparisons. Wait, your houses are alive? Your houses aren't? Aren't? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah. It was visually, yeah. All of those characters, you know, it would, yeah, it was good. I and unfortunately, Dave, I'm sorry, I don't know the name of your favorite character from this from this movie. <laughs> For me, I the, from the quantum realm. Yes, I love that dude with the. I I don't. It's hard to explain. The guy that had the 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 round like cannon thing. Can oh oh. See, no, I thought you were going with the little blob guy. The little blob guy. No, no, he was uh, that was like comedy relief with with that dude. I, I liked that the cannon guy, whatever that. I don't know what he was or what, but yeah, I felt bad for him when Kang blew, <laughs> blew him up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we're getting reverse and blue. Yeah, um, I, uh, yeah, I'm trying to because I'm looking on IMDb. It's got a list of the care of the characters, mm -hmm. but not knowing. Like Who the only one I know is, is yeah. Quays, was playing by William Jackson Harper, was the uh, the guy with the psychic powers. Right, he could read your mind and stuff. Yeah, yeah. and he was pretty cool. Do I know him from anything? No, I don't. Yeah, that that little blob thing that you were talking about, I thought that was um, uh, what's his face, but he's not listed on here, so I'm pretty no. sure it's not, it's not him. 
But he sounded, I don't know, there was times where it sounded like him. And I'm like, why is Ryan Reynolds in <laughs> Quantum Mania? He, he kind of did have that, that yeah. <laughs> now, who? I'm trying to figure out who that, um, the girl was. I, I don't, try to find. Which one, the, uh, the leader of the, the one that was in the jail that the, the daughter in, broke out? Yeah, Gentora. Gentora, that's Caddy M. O'Brien. Yes. I I don't know if it's because how they did the makeup, but she looked a lot like Proxima Midnight. Because mm. she had the, I mean, besides the skin color, but just the, the, the way they did her makeup and, and the way she acted and stuff. I mean, she, she reminds me a lot of Proxima Midnight besides the the skin color. Mm -hmm. So, is there a correlation there, or is it just by complete coincidence? I don't know. Well, what is it with the quantum, the quantum realm? How do people? How did did they? Unless I was not awake. How did every? How did those people get in there? They all got sucked in there, and they just formed a society. They like, conveniently did I didn't bring that up. <laughs> Okay then, because I know it was I was tired going into it, but I didn't, I thought maybe I missed that part. <laughs> they conveniently did not bring that. I thought at some point, oh wait, we're gonna find out how this all happened because they made a point to say this wasn't all here last right. time we talked. But then it just said, well, you know, with the quantum realm, there's so many different areas of it. You you really don't know. Yeah. How expansive it really is. Uh, and left it at that. Mm. But like whenever you you, you see uh, Janet De <laughs> Jan Van Dyne, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer's character there in the first part, she's there's a couple of life forms that we've seen in the past or kind of seen, and just her. And then she talks about being alone the whole time, being alone, and then Kang shows up. And now finally having someone to be able to to talk to. My only other guess is through Kang's stuff, these people came to be. But I, I yeah, it, it's it would that that part is a little iffy, and that's that's kind of one, you know, um, as the little blob guy said, it's a hole. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in the writing and the, the plot, it, it, does it kill it? No, no, at least not for me. No, no, uh, yeah, I, I, I can, I can look past that because mm -hmm. it, to me, it, it everything else worked, you know, how everyone showed up there again. Who's to say that we, you know, beforehand anyone explored the entire area? You know, if someone's Stuck on a desert island doesn't mean that there's no one else on the planet. Right, exactly. <laughs> so uh, and the one, the one character that we haven't uh, discussed yet, who uh, made his first appearance, I'm assuming, right in the MCU. Yes, it is. So far, uh, was Modok, by uh, played by Corey Stahl. Um, what was your opinion on how he looked and his part in it? <laughs> So the uh oh, let's see um I, I was trying to try to find what the abbreviation is because mobile organism designed only for killing. Killing, yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a different take on the character than what we know in the comic books mm -hmm. as far as how he became and 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 whatnot and the some of the powers. Uh because I believe Well uh, that, let's see here. That's my question because I, I, I don't know much about the comics. Was he was that accurate where he was that B guy or whatever in no. the and then uh, okay, so he had nothing to do with that. Okay. No. Um <clears throat> the the synopsis from the Marvel's Avenger the Ultimate Character Guide. Updated expanded edition from whenever. Uh, MODOK stands for the mobile organism designed only for killing. He was once an AIM agent, George uh, 
Tarlington, uh, chosen by AIM to become a humanoid supercomputer. The experimented, experiment mutated George and drove him insane. Originally called Modak, uh, M-O-D-O-C, mm-hmm. with the, the last letter standing for computing, George decided the last letter should be K for killing. Uh, since becoming AIM's leader, he has terrorized the world. He is also his own. He, uh, sorry, he has his own gang, the Modax Eleven. Uh, so his height is twelve foot. He weighs seven hundred fifty pounds. Uh, he does have hair. Modak has superhuman mental powers and telepathic powers and computer-like brain. His hover chair allows him to fly, and his arms is armed with various weapons. He can also teleport. They said he was so, twelve foot. 12 yeah, foot. according to this, his height is twelve. Yeah, he's twelve foot. He's actually a rather large sucker. <laughs> so instead of him being shrunken down, his head got bigger, but the rest of him. Uh, so he's like eight eight foot of head. And like, <laughs> pretty much <laughs> pretty much I, I almost uh, like that storyline better than the storyline we got in the movie but it, it is what it is I just rolled with it I, yeah. I think for the I think for the movie it, it worked well because yeah. it, it you were able to bring back an established character mm-hmm. that since we're now delving into the quantum realm it's like wait a second the wasp ended up in the quantum realm whatever became of him. How come we haven't seen him again? You, you know, someone could perseverate into that. But with, um, so it's like, okay, we'll just run with this. We, mm-hmm. we, you know, he shrunk down. He did see him shrink in kind of a weird, funky sort of way. So all of that kind of worked. And then you, you still have the psychotic end because the wasp was psychotic. Yeah. And the, I keep on calling him the, the wasp. He's not the wasp. Who's the yellow jacket? I'm sorry. <clears throat> yellow jacket was psychotic. Yes. And so it just plays instead of having an, an introducing another different psychotic character. It's like, all right, we just revamped the one psychotic character that we have. You know, and this is it, it's a logical path. Right. And um, then you already have the established relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Between true. Modok. Ant Man, Cassie, the whole thing. So you, you already have you have a built in um, triangle of of con- you know, the connections. Yeah, and I mean, with the so, beauty of the multiverse, they can always bring in another Modoc. Yeah, from a different place with that storyline that you just read. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know I mean? and so. well, with his with his battle shield down and everything, I thought he looked fantastic. Um, with it up, and you were just getting Derek's face. It was a little stretch, two dimensional. <laughs> like yeah. his face looked flat. Yeah. Um. So that that's where the only fault I have against the visual effect. I mean, it it still looked amazing. Yeah. But it it wasn't like. Yeah. Well, it did. It didn't. Uh. Uh, you know, give it give it enough three D uh, depth or effect on the mesh. But uh, yeah, it almost looked like a, a stretched out like movie screen in that in his body frame. It, that yeah. to me, that's what it kind of looked like. It didn't it didn't look like a a, a, a facial featured. Uh, you know what I'm sort of trying to where like, I'm trying to go. If they said somehow that there was a glass shield that was in front of his face. Mm-hmm. I would have bought that more. Right. There you go. Um, but just the, the way the character acted, it just, again, being completely psychotic mm-hmm. and having this arsenal of weapons and just, I'm just going to just destroy whatever I can. Mm. Yes. Just really made him menacing and, and uh, again, another a good adversary. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you know, adding in some comic humor at the end. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I I enjoy. I thought I was afraid of how they were going to do it. They thought they could have easily gone 
the wrong direction with that. And I think th- for me, this worked. I mean, not that I'm a, I'm a huge Modak fan, so I couldn't tell you that much about him. Right. Um, other than I know he was, he had the mental powers, which is they they don't have, but makes perfect sense because they haven't really officially introduced that. They they have introduced it because it was in Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness, but that was in another dimension. This is not so. That type of stuff doesn't happen. So that it, that we could get away with that. Um, I think the main thing is you just want a psychotic, psychotic person, um, deformed person, misshapen person, with a multitude of weapons that just wants to destroy. Yes, <laughs> his adversaries, and he he absolutely does that. Like wherever he, they first introduce the character, he just goes on and destroys a whole bunch of yeah. extras. And he knew not to mess with Kang. That uh-huh. was the only thing. Like he would, <laughs> he was out to destroy everything. But when it came to Kang, man, he was like, "Look, <laughs> I'm shutting up now." <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then what he said? Didn't Kang tell him like, "Don't speak when I'm talking" or something like that? Yes. <laughs> Shut him up real don't, quick. <laughs> don't speak in my presence. Yeah, that's what like it was. That. Don't speak in my presence. <laughs> okay. So. Oh, but no, his character added to it. I didn't have a problem with him. It was just, it, again, it was just that what it, the, the visual effects of him was a little weird when he didn't have the, uh, what'd you call it? The little the shield, the face face, shield, the face shield on. Yeah, we, with the face shield down, it, it worked fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I liked the interaction between Modoc and Kang. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that brings me to one of my, I think one of my favorite scenes. In the jail, I mean, we're fast forwarding here, mm-hmm. but um, when Scott and Cassie are both in the jail, and Kang comes up and proposition or proposes to Scott, here's my deal, mm-hmm. and just the way he went about it um, was just you know, this guy was bad. Mm-hmm. I, it, it, there was no no question about this guy's morals. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and again, to make another Star Wars reference, I got very like Vader five. He was of Vader-esque, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially because he was. I, I mean, I don't know what you want to call it in the MCU, but he was using the Force because <laughs> he was pushing he, him he up was, against he was the wall. Using... <laughs> Well, see, and here, the, the, I guess you could call those telepathic powers, because that's, you know. That's what he was using? Okay. Yeah, telekinesic, te- telekinesic powers. Um, so it's, or some sort of gravity control, or I mean, who knows what, but, or reality control. But whatever, whatever it was, you just got a sense of, and, and again, he didn't really have to do anything. Mm-mm. It was the way that he spoke, the way that he carried himself, and just the slightest gestures. Yeah. Just portrayed this power, and this is one bad dude. Mm-hmm. Which, at the end of Loki, the the one who remains says to to Loki and to oh, and I forgot her name now. The female Loki. I forgot it. It's been a long time since I seen. The, I'd have. I'm. I'm gonna have to do a rewatch on Loki. Yeah. <laughs> but um. Anyway, so says to them. Yeah. I'm not the one that you have to be afraid of. The, yeah. There's worse than me. Yeah. So you're thinking this whole time that this was the worst one. And it, I, I like how he kept on saying, "I'm trying to stop the other ones," which is exactly what. The one from Loki was saying. Yeah. Yeah. And then you get that extra credit. Yeah. The after credit scene. Where it's like. How many? Yeah. Well and that's it. Like when. When he said. He kept. They kept it cryptic. cryptic, For me anyway. Where he kept saying. They they banished me here. To the quantum realm. Right. So I kept finding myself. Trying to think. Who would have sent him there. You know. So like. Avengers. Was it. Yeah, X-Men, like I had, was it Fantastic like I had, Four? 
Right. Well, I had to, to like, was it the the Celestials from, uh, you know, from uh, Eternals? The, the Eternals, you know, because I'm like, well, you know, I'm assuming they're going to be brought up again down the road. So I'm like, who brought them there? But we we got that answer at the end in the post credit. <laughs> he did it to himself. Literally, yeah. Yeah. he did this <laughs> to himself. <laughs> he banished himself. But now, do you think with that, po- since we're on that or we're talking about that now, do you think they're going overboard with how many Kangs there were in that? <laughs> you know what I mean? There's like, <laughs> um, <laughs> there was millions of them. <laughs> yes and no. Not to be ambiguous with the answer. Um, I, for the purpose of storytelling and trying to give a d- more defined direction, yes, I think that is it at this point in time it feels excessive mm-hmm. but also remembering that there's relatively an infinite amount of possibilities in alternate universes right it makes sense yeah so um that's why that's why i'm saying i guess and no it, it from a story writing point, yes, that just seems like it's it's too crazy. Yeah. But from the from the logical point of okay, this is the the multiverse, and there's one for every multiverse out there, and they're pulling them all in. Less two now. Uh, that there would be a infinite amount of them. So then my uh, follow-up to that would be is going forward, out of these millions of gangs that we got introduced to, how do they pick which one to roll with going forward? You know what I'm saying? Well, and I think what we can we can decipher from it is that there is the three main ones. Three or four main right. uh, gangs that are in control. Those are the ones that are going to be the ones that eventually the Avengers will probably deal with. We'll have to deal with. Um, but from the rest of them, we don't know. Are they going to be showing up in other movies? Will they not show up? Will they somehow just to kind of, as the, the quote-unquote main ones are dealt with, the other ones kind of fade off somehow I, I in and i've said this before it's been a little while since i've said it but i say it again and kevin feige we trust i mean mm-hmm. the, the guy's got a plan and he's not gonna let us down right um yeah I, I, and I, from the same book i have uh king's little little write-up <clears throat> uh nathaniel richards discovered time travel and journeyed back from his own time to 3000 ce to ancient Egypt. There he ruled as Ramatut for several years, later traveled to the 40th century where he created an empire as King the Conqueror. King is usually an enemy of the Avengers, but once uh, joined forces with them to prevent his future self, Mortius, from wiping out a number of parallel worlds. Ah. Hmm. Uh, his powers, he is a master of time travel. His suit provides super strength and protection. He has access to future weapons. Hmm. Uh, Kang travels back into time, uh, time to bring his young self, Iron Lad, back to the present. But Iron Lad formed the Young Avengers and hoped to never become Kang. Okay. I wonder if we'll actually see a Kang go with the Avengers. I don't put it out of the realm of possibility. Yeah. Because they keep on saying how they are trying to stop themselves mm-hmm. uh, from from destroying everything. Uh, so would one of those billions that we saw join force with the Avengers to help defeat himself. I, I, I think there's a good chance. I, I, I know nothing. I, you know, 
but I I can't say that's out of a very good realm of possibility. Yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, the Kang that we did see, though, it, I want more of that Kang, even though he's gone. Well, <laughs> and, and, like I said, and he's not the worst one. <laughs> I know, but that dude was just he. That guy zap my with the instant like. Gone. What was that? I need one of them, man. <laughs> it, it, Poof, it, it, you're vaporization. Gone. Poof, you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> you're gone. You're gone. And yeah. the, you could t- he was just you could tell he was like not settled. He was mentally yeah. just not right. Yeah. And just wow. I mean like I said, a proper villain. And for all the people who mock Marvel about oh the villains are just the same you know have the same powers as the the hero just bad mm-hmm. he does not have the powers of Ant Man no strike that reverse it Ant Man does not have the powers of Kang okay there you go <laughs> <laughs> not at all if he did none he of them have the, the power. fight might have gone a little bit better for him but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we're le- we're leaving out the uh, the ants, you know, they came out. Oh, you yes. know, they were cool. I, I I thought that was cool, and it, it worked for me. And yeah. I, you know, the subtle references. Bill Murray goes, "What's an ant? Do we have them here?" <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but again, in setting it up, yeah. you, know, you you had the the part of the lab. You had Scott Lang falling and cut oh, breaking open. The ant farm, for lack mm-hmm. of a better term. Um, and then you you had Bill Murray bring up the ants. So th- again, it's like we're giving you hints that the ants are here. Yeah, we're just not showing them to you yet. Yeah, it, it was just cool because like it, it, they brought them in right at that right point where it looked like the battle was was lost. You know what I mean? And then on the horizon, da, 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 here comes like here comes the cavalry. It is yeah. a bunch of ants. <laughs> Giant ants. <laughs> Futuristic giant Futuristic. ants with Laser battle armor. Something, yeah. <laughs> battle armor. It, it reminds me of like some, well, some toy I probably played with in the, right. the 80s where they, yeah. Uh, <laughs> or they had like, what was it? There was a dinosaur one where yeah. the dinosaur, uh, you know, people weaponized dinosaurs and put battle armor on them and they battle. I, I don't remember the name of it now, but I remember that they had that. <laughs> Dino saucers, saucers, dino saucers, or something like that. There was an old, old. You're talking about like old cartoon, right? Yeah, yeah, there's something from the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but because, they did it. What's his face shows up and he's like, "Oh, sorry, I'm late." It was a lot of ants. <laughs> <laughs> he's just standing there. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I kept on thinking one of them was gonna snuff it. I think I even said that. I was like, somebody's gonna die. I, yeah. I just had a feeling, but yeah. no, no one did. Uh, not that I, I wish any of their characters to die, but just right. like, I think it would have changed the, um, again, the gravitas of the movie. Yeah. And uh, to, I guess to, to kind of wrap things up, I loved how they ended it. Mm-hmm. With Scott's, you know, walking along, it's like, okay, back to everyday life. Everything's normal. Everything's back to the way it was. But there's that voice in the back of his head. Mm-hmm. Going, wait a second. Yeah. Yeah. Something's not right. Yeah. Did I just destroy the world? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we'll come back to that later or something like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I did just say Yeah. But it, 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 so then they go to another scene and he's still like, it's still egging at him that yeah. something's not right. Yeah. Something's oh, not, you know. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, and again, I think that sets things up beautifully for what's to come. Now, do you think is this the last of the Ant Man movies? Like, or I know we're going to see him. We're more than likely going to see him again in future movies. He's going to show up again. Well, he'll show up for Avengers and or whatnot. Right. But are um, you hearing anything like is this the last of of the of his uh, movies? I haven't heard. I, as of yet, I have not heard um, 
whether or not there will be any more Ant Mans after this. I don't see why there couldn't be. All right. But um, I, I mean, because for a lower key character, you know, because when you think Avengers, you're, you know, whatever you're thinking, Iron Man, Hulk, all them guys. You're not thinking Ant Man, but for a lower level Avenger. He's done a lot of stuff and moved well, the story. Keep along in mind, a lot. Iron Man was a lower level one too. Was he? Yes, I, Iron Man was a B character before they made the movies. Ah, okay. I would have put him up as one of the top dogs, but no. Nope. Wow. Oh. He, he was a B character, and the reason why we got the Iron Man movie because it was one of the ones that they had the rights to. Wow! Really? And. So they, the movies get, made him a, 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 a yep. higher... Wow, okay. I didn't know that either. Interesting. So, uh, yeah, he, he wasn't one of the, the more popular... Yeah, he wasn't your Spider-Man, your Captain America, um, your X-Men. He, you know, he, he was uh, he, he was one of the, the lesser characters, which is why they still had the rights. Okay. Yeah, but, okay, so we have the rights. We can, we can roll with this. Um... But yeah, so yeah, Ant Man, I, I can't. We're, we're, you're obviously not done with him. Yeah. You know, in what capacity? I, I don't know. Um, you know, are are they going to constantly follow the rule of three? Well, I mean, I don't think so because Thor, you're not. Thor. Yeah, Thor's got four, for now. Um, there's another Captain America coming out too, isn't there? <sighs> It, there's a yeah by by mantle it's another captain america movie the different captain america but it's another captain america movie right um you know guardians is going to yeah, right. the guardians that we know of at least will bow out at 3 mm -hmm. doctor strange we've only had two there's a fourth spider-man coming mhm mm um, so where does Ant Man fall into that? You know, does something happen during Secret Invasion, Secret War? Um, supposedly a lot's gonna add change in that one, which we're just months away from. Secret yeah, that's Invasion. coming out soon. I was just looking at the timeline, and there's a there's a bunch of stuff coming up quickly, yeah. too. Yep. Uh, I can't it, wait. It was um, all right. So we got yeah, uh, Ant Man and Quantum Medium just came out. You got season two of What If, Secret Invasion, and you got the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three, season two of Loki, The Marvels, Echo, Iron Heart, Agatha, <laughs> Daredevil. There's a Marvel Zombies, Captain. I mean, obviously this is over. Of course, in the next year and a half, two years or whatever. Yeah, there, there's. Yeah, Echo, I'm hearing, is getting pushed back. Oh, they're pushing it? Yeah, because they're just um, running into a little bit of issues with it. Okay. Kind of like they did with She-Hulk. How do we present this? Oh, okay. Um, Marvel Zombies, then Captain America, Thunderbolts, Blade. So, yeah, they've they got quite a bit coming. I just hope it's not, like, oversaturation. Deadpool 3. Deadpool 3. Because um, that wasn't on the list. Fantastic Four. Um, was there something else? Now, do you think we get to that point of, of oversaturation down the road when, when all this is done of too much Marvel stuff and it's just going to have to maybe pause and then take a couple years to regroup and come in? I mean, as long as um, if they're making money and everybody's seeing it, they're obviously they're going to keep pumping stuff out. But does it ever get to the point of of oversaturation? Well, let's say that's already been put out there. Um, during the earning call, whenever uh, Bob Iger said that they're going to have to cut back by about three million in production and this and that and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Around the same time, Kevin Feige said, "Yeah, we're we're going to be trimming the, uh, the list a little bit." Oh, okay. Um, we're getting Iron Wars as well. That's that's one from 
Disney Plus to movie, which actually I think now that actually makes more logical sense because they're trying to cut the Disney Plus budget to make Disney Plus stay profitable. Well, yeah, I heard make that. it yeah, profitable. Yeah. So now you, you know, before I was wondering why you would have done that. Now it makes perfect sense why you you moved it off of Disney Plus and put it into a theatrical release mm-hmm. because that's a whole different budget. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So that's it's about what we know of what's coming up, and there's there's a bunch more things that we don't know about that's coming out. Um, and I'm I'm definitely looking forward to all of it. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know because again because compare it to the Star Wars stuff, we're getting we're getting beat over the head with all the the series is coming up. There's no you know motion pictures coming out anytime soon that I'm aware of. I mean I know I think you were we were talking about that one movie that probably got greenlit, but it's when is that ever going to come out? Uh, 25 in 2025. Yeah, see, so it's like, but. Again, the series have been good, but I don't feel like, it, you know, if we had a series movie, series movie, series movie, I think it would have been, like, too much, where I'll just write out whatever, you know, the Ahsokas and stuff like that, you know. But eventually, I'm, I want to see another no, feature movie. film, you yeah. know. But it's got to be done right, though. I don't want them patchworking something and just throwing it out there. Yeah. No, no, and I and I think... I think the series have breathed new life into the Star Wars. Yes. Um, where Marvel already had the the, the gears were already spinning. The you know they they had full momentum. I think it's just giving you more more variety um, and just flushing things out even more. In Marvel, um, you said. Yeah, with the yeah. with the Marvel stuff. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, next, um, next I want to say is May 10th, so Guardians, Guardians 3, I think, is the next release that I know of. And that'll be a big one. That's going to be. Yeah. That's more, it's more centric around Rocket, and I think there's going to be, again, a lot more emotion. Yeah. And And they're even trying to build that up in the trailer. That's how they're they're p- pitching the trailers. Well, you see, was there is it Nebula holding uh, Star Lord? So I guess they're trying to make it think he dies in it or something like that. But I don't think they would have given that away in the trailer, man. <laughs> well, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, okay, yeah. it, it's kind of like that Harry Harry Potter scene yeah. um, at the part two, uh, Deathly Hollows, where oh look, Harry's dead. Yeah. Oh wait, no, he's not. Yeah. <laughs> not quite dead yet. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that's I, I think there's a lot of red herrings in there, but I think there's a, they're also trying to prepare us for something. Yeah. So. Yeah, but the Guardians have always found a way to, to to pluck at the heartstrings, though, man, and get you a little teary. Yeah. You know? So it, it, it it's would be not meant to be it. taken seriously, but at the same time, there's a lot of um feeling. You know, like when uh, what, when what's his face died, and they had the the Ravengers were there, and they had the yep. send off for him, the funeral. Dude, that was <laughs> that was touching, yeah. man. As, you know, it was emotional. You know, so they 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 know what they're doing. Or even just going back to the first one, getting to talk about Rocket when they're in that uh, getting into the prison and changing clothes, and then you just see oh yeah, all the- Rocket without a shirt on, but all the bionics, mm-hmm. you know, parts and the scarring on the back of him. Yeah. Didn't nothing had to been said, nothing all you see was the visual, but you felt it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they 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 do a they do a very good job with that. Uh James Gunn has done a fantastic job with the series. It's it's I'm wishing him well in his his new ventures, but we'll miss him on uh on this side of the street. Yeah. But hey, Marvel's in my opinion. Marvel finally got back on the track. We had two back-to-back good ones, Black Panther yep. and, and Ant-Man. And I'm hoping Guardians follows in that path. <laughs> I, uh, I I mean, I don't want to... 
you know, get my hopes up too high for Guardians, but my hopes are high for yeah. for Guardians. I think I think we we're going to be in for a treat. I'm looking forward to it, and uh, yeah, here's uh, here's hoping. Yeah, I agree. All right, well, Dave, thank you for uh, anything more that you wanted to mention about Ant Man or. No, no, I'm good. I, like I said, it's uh, it's definitely worth going to see. And I, you know, I don't know. Like again, I heard going in, you're either gonna love it or you hate it. I don't know unless you know. Like, what were the critiques about this movie that people didn't like about it? I, I don't. I, I try to stay away from reading the, the hate mail, but I, I just don't know what they were nitpicking about with this. Because for me, it was. It, I mean, everybody's got to gonna have their own opinions and stuff. But for me, it, 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 it was fine <laughs> for what it was trying I, to do i i i don't um i don't know i and i i have said this about other things i think part of the problem is that whenever you get things so established or people get so invested in something they start creating their own their own direction in their head this is how it has to happen. It, this is this is what I feel it should happen. And this is if it doesn't happen this way, I'm going to be disappointed because I know I'm right. Yeah. Or, you know, based on these comics, and here's the clues, and this is, you know, they overanalyze, overthink th things, and they look too far into stuff um, or too much into things and forget that there's other people out there who are actually in control of this stuff and they have their visions and are being told what to write yeah. for one reason or another. And if their stuff doesn't jive, they, they throw a, a hissy fit. And, uh, you know, it's like, I, like I said, I remember re when the Harry Potter books were coming out and the last one was about to come out and everyone was speculating this is how it's going to happen. That's going to ha how it happened. And most people did not get it right. And they were upset about it. Yeah. My only no, comparison this is not how it could end. This is not how it should end. Yeah. My only comparison would be because um, it was around the time when uh, the Hobbits and the Lord of the Ring movies came out. Like I had actually read those books. Um, and when the, when, like, when the movies were playing out, I'm like, that's not how it happened. That's not supposed to happen, but I was able to decide, say, hey, listen, okay, they, the book is just the starter. They don't need to go by it word for word throughout the whole right. entire thing. I was able to separate the two and enjoy both of them, the book and the movies. <laughs> and know? I did the same with the Harry Potters. And yeah. what people have to realize, particularly with the MCU versus Marvel, uh, the Marvel comics, is the MCU is its own thing. So, like, you would have... You have the Marvel comics. You have the Unlimited series. You have the 29, 2099 series. You you have all these other variations. The MCU is its own variation. So it will take cues. It will take hints. It will take um, inspiration from the age-old comics that Jack and Stan and uh, Rob and uh, Jim and all those guys wrote. Mm -hmm takes inspiration from them but they do what they they tell the story that they want in the direction that they want and take things in the way that they want so it is be thankful for what you're getting because oh, yeah. you and i both know we want a long time to get here oh yeah long long time <laughs> yeah so um no, because otherwise we'd be complaining. Like if we if we're not getting this stuff, we'd be complaining that we're not getting this stuff. So it's exactly, like, you so, know. So shut up and be thankful for what you got. Thankfully, uh, we got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so and you know, no one's gonna. You can't please everyone. Right. Um. There's always gonna be people that hate the movie. There's always gonna be people that's their favorite movie. You know, mm -hmm. like Black Widow. We neither of us cared for it. Thor: Love and Thunder. Neither of us cared for it. Right. There's people out there that think they're the best movies in the uh, the MCU's ever done. <laughs> Good for them. Yeah. Yep. And on that bombshell, Dave, yep. thanks for joining us. <laughs> thanks for having me again, Matthew. Appreciate it, bud.
You're welcome. We'll be talking soon. Yes, sir. Well, there you have it, folks. What did you think of Ant-Man the Wasp, Quantumania? Let us know. Join the conversation on our social network groups. Our Facebook page is facebook.com slash WDMagicCast. On Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Actually, just uh, saying, on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Twitter, we can be found on all forms of social media there at WDMagicCast. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel where we got some really cool things going on there as well. As long as YouTube allows me to keep that stuff up. You can also leave us a voice message through the Anchor app. Be heard on the show yourself. Let you be heard. You can hear yourself on the show. Send a voice message through the Anchor app or Anchor.fm website. Or record a message electronically on your smartphone, tablet, computer, whatever you have. And email it to us to email at wdmagicast.com you could also email us to that address any suggestions or questions you may have that you want to be heard on the show or about the show go ahead send them right there as well links to all these are in the show notes and on our website which is wdmagicast.com i want to thank you for your time i know how little time we all have these days and i know You know, the fact that we get to spend some of this together truly means a lot to us over here at WD MagicCast. Um, We we cannot thank you enough. We truly appreciate it. Um, Please, if you really want to help the show out, go to Apple Podcasts, go to Stitcher, leave us a rating review. We have all five-star reviews at the moment on both those those podcatchers. Um, Keep them coming. We need more. The more that we get, the more likely that they're going to promote our podcast and more people start listening and just makes the podcast even bigger and better. The more people that listen, um, the more we can do. Walt believed in a big Disney family, and so do I. Don't forget to subscribe to the show while you're at it. This way you always know uh, when new episodes are posted. Why you had to consider becoming a premium subscriber, really help the show out. You can do this, do this over at anchor.fm slash wdmagicast slash support. You can also check out our merchandise shop where you can get yourself some really cool WD Magicast stuff. Got mugs, sweatshirts, jackets, hoodies, t-shirts, notebooks, stickers, you name it. We got a bunch of stuff there. Um, make sure to check out because that will help the show out greatly. Uh, and you get something in the return too. You get some really cool, really cool stuff. Trust me, it's good stuff. I, I got a lot of it myself. You can find these links as well in the show notes and on our website. Because remember, this show is brought to you by listeners like you. Whatever you're feeling out there, whatever darkness and whatever trouble seems to be bothering you. Remember, you are special. You are someone that really does make a difference in this world. Whether you may realize it or not. The world is a better place because of you and because of the light of you. Let the world see your light. Let it shine for everyone to see. Never give up. Never give in. Be your own hero. And if you need to, ask for help. There are people out there and you may never have met them before. You may not know their name. You may never have even heard of them. But they're willing to help you. Or lead you to where you need to be to get the help that you need. Never give up. Never give in. Be your own hero. Now I'd like to end this week's show with a quote from Walt Disney himself. I don't pose as an authority on anything at all. I follow the opinions of the ordinary people I meet. And I take pride in the close-knit teamwork of my organization. Again, that's from Walt Disney. Thank you again for listening, everyone, and I'll see you next time.